doesn't work because it's called the, the, the constraints of history. Let me explain why. No Jew in first century Palestine. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, why am I a liar? No, let me explain why. Because you said a copy of the Quran. I could answer this uh, question. I'm not a Muslim. Yeah, you probably could. Hello there. Uh, the answer is because the Quran is primarily an oral recita recitation. It's in the hearts of millions of Muslims. There are kids as young as oh, right. there are kids as young as three. It's not a get out. I'm trying to explain what the Quran is. Who have memorised the, the entire Quran is, the entire Quan. This so, is the so I would have given, and I'm not Muslim. Right? Yeah, but he's been here long okay, enough to know okay, the truth. Okay, so ev every, every, let me finish, let me answer your question. All so right, every, on. every physical Quran on Earth, if it was to disappear tomorrow, it wouldn't particularly bother me in the slightest, because I personally know people who know the entire Quran by heart, just as the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, knew the Quran by heart. So yes, if it came to a copy of the Quran versus a human life, I would say destroy the copy of the Quran and save the human life, because okay. it wouldn't affect the existence of the Quran one bit in the world. It could be rewritten right. from memory in five minutes. Okay, not the dimension for the question. Right, 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 right. Mass no, amnesia. Five minutes. Five minutes. It's a bit Ma long. Okay. It's a bit long. That, was, that was a figurative five minutes, not a literal five minutes. Five minutes. Let, let me add to this. Yeah, come on. Five minutes, 20 seconds. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, the other time, okay. Mass amnesia, all the oral tradition is forgotten. There's only a copy of the Quran. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, all, everyone knew, knows it orally, it's gone out of their heads. Save the Quran or save a human being. Okay, that, that, that scenario, it's, a difficult question. it's not a difficult question, very easy to answer. Okay. The Quran promises Muhammad that, that God himself will preserve the existence of the Quran. All the previous revelations, be they the Torah or the Injil, the Gospel, were the responsibility of the Jews and the Christians to look after that. But God says in the Quran, it's his responsibility, not Muhammad's, to ensure the, the endurance of the Quran forever. So, 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 so in your sense, your scenario could not arise because God has promised to preserve the Quran indefinitely. If it were talking about the Injil or the Torah, there would be a real problem, but not with the Quran, because God himself has given himself the responsibility of maintaining the Quran in existence. But it it cannot be destroyed according to God's promise. But it could be a test for you, for example. No, if, if I, I, would, I would was. trust God's promise that he will uh, continue the Quran in existence. You, you might save the person, and the Quran, but then God say you've done right, and the Quran will come back. Can I, I, I can show you the passage in the Quran where it says okay, that God no, will preserve the Quran. I trust God's promise over that. That to them it cannot come, uh, come to pass because I'm a Muslim and I believe the Quran. The Quran will not disappear because God has promised that it will not. Unlike the Injil, the, uh, the Christian gospel, which has been corrupted and changed according to Islam, and we haven't, we don't have that in its pure form. But the Quran is, uh, if you like, a restatement of the essential truths of the Injil for us. For, uh, for all time. So we do know what the, the NGO essentially is about. The God, the, the mercy and grace of God, judgment, the day of judgment and so on. So is it, that's a problem for Christians, not for Muslims, in my view. Any more oh, no, paradoxes? I'll have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> what, were you going to say something? Uh, well, I was saying that the, the Injil, the gospel, has been corrupted and lost. That's what the Quran teaches, but there's the, the, the very little evidence to support that view. If you look at the uh, historical evidence, the manuscript evidence. I think if you look at the, um, the teaching of Jesus in the Gospels we have, the earliest Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, and you see what Jesus taught about salvation, forgiveness and so on, it's very similar to what Islam teaches, but it's very different from what Christians teach today about what the gospel is. And that's the difference, the original gospel of Jesus versus the gospel about Jesus, which is what you preach today. Uh, according to my understanding of Islam, the way to get saved is to say the Shahada. There's nothing in what Jesus taught about saying anything like the Shahada. Uh, but Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And, he's, and he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. What is the first part of the Shahada? No, I bear witness it. that there is no... I'll tell you, it's if you don't know... It. You didn't have to say that. I'll tell you what, you tell you what it was. The shahada. the shahada is, there is no God but God. The single God, the, the one God. Jesus said, God. the greatest commandment God. is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They are exactly the same. But, Yahweh, <laughs> not Allah. What, what does Allah mean? Not Odin. What is Aramaic for Allah? Well, I've heard lots of different stories okay. about what is, what is the word for God in Aramaic that Jesus would have said in... What, what is the word? It's Allah. Allah. It's, it's the same... It's a cognate of... It's the same so, word. Yahweh is a personal name. It's not the word God. It's not Eli, Eli yeah. or Elohim. But the word for God in Aramaic that Jesus apparently used, according to the Gospels, was in effect Allah. 
not Yahweh. Yahweh was not a word that was spoken in everyday speech. It was it was spoken one day, one day a year in the temple, was it not? Uh, a Yom Kippur, I think. You probably know more than me. So it was not a word that, that Jesus would have used, or any Jew would have used ordinarily. There was a prohibition on that. Huh? Wasn't it El originally, the Jews? That's another, that's another word for God. There are lots of different words, yeah. yeah but El was for Jehovah, wasn't it El? But I'm talking about Aramaic. Uh, the word for God. Different uses. Yeah, different uses. Elohim, Elohim, Adonai, Elohim, yeah. I don't know. Sort of so according, let me give you an example. According to Jesus, what must we do to be saved? According to the earliest Gospels we have today, what must we do to be saved? Be a good boy. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. According to Paul, didn't I say according to Jesus? According to Paul or Peter. Okay. Do you think Paul and Jesus are the same person? No. Okay, neither do I. So according to Jesus, in the earliest Gospels, what must we change do to be saved? Well, I look at what Jesus said to people, I see you need a change of heart. You need to have a heart for God. That's what I see from Jesus' teaching. Right. Both the rich and ruler and Zacchaeus fit into that, that picture. They had to change and have a heart for God. The rich and ruler failed to do that, he loved his money too much. But Zacchaeus changed, and he did have a heart for God, that's why he received salvation. So, coming back to this story, a man came to Jesus and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And come what and it, follow what, me was the last thing Jesus said to him. Well, that's, Sell everything okay. and come and follow me. What did Jesus, the money to the poor, what did Jesus, what did Jesus say initially to an, in answer that question? He started where the guy was and moved him on to what he needed. What did Jesus and say? What he moved him on to okay. was sell your money, okay. give the money to so sell your possessions, give the money to the poor, come follow me. That's what he had to do in the end. That's what he was lacking. Okay. Because he wasn't lacking the pain of the I'll ask you one. He believed all the. He'd pain all the time. I'll ask you one more time, and then the if you don't answer, I'll give you the answer. Giving, according to, I want the actual words. This is not according to what Jesus said initially. Oh, it's not relevant to what end. Jesus said. It's what he said ah, in the end. That's okay. Important. Well, that's I'm concerned with what he says in the beginning, middle, and end, because the beginning of something matters as much as the end. So, according the to Jesus, he tells us where that guy was. Okay. Jesus started let me where that guy was and led him onto what he needed. Okay. Let me tell you what Jesus said according to Mark chapter 10. Obey the Ten Commandments or what are the Ten Commandments? No, no, no. What does the Lord good teach, say? Good what teacher, does the Lord what, say? I'm just trying to repeat what your own Bible says. Yeah. Maybe you're not happy with it. I'm paraphrasing, but very, very well. Right, I'm trying to quote what it says verbatim. So, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good teacher, says the man, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, why do you call me good? Oh, no. Well, another one. I'm covered in the blooming things. <laughs> Down. It, there's an infestation of insects all over me. Destroy the, the camel's back. <laughs> I got, I got to fall over. Uh, the weight. I can't stand up straight. Uh, uh, one, two. Uh, so, just to repeat it, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, "Why do you call me good? No one good. There is no one good but God alone." Sure, you want to call me good because no one is good but God. You wanted you really want to say that I'm God? He's making the guy think. He was perfectly correct that Jesus was God, but he was making him think, making him sure that he wanted to say that. Are you finished? Yeah. I haven't even got to the answer yet, and you've already given me a sermon. He's got you your answer. Listen to him well. I'm trying to I'm trying to recount what Jesus said according yeah, to the yeah, gospel. Yeah, you're twisting it to what, I mean what you wanted to say. Have I misquoted? Really have said. I actually misquoted? No, you misquoted it, right? I have not misquoted it. So let me finish. I'll repeat it again. Maybe you can just hold your peace for 30 seconds without sermonising on it. Because I know why you want to do it. You want to interpret what Jesus says so it's not uh, um, damaging to the religion you follow today, which is quite different from what Jesus yeah, preached. which is a reasonable thing to do, because if you have an understanding of the whole of the Bible, then you have to make each fit in, passage fit in with that. You're taking that passage and make it fit in with Islam, not fit in with the rest of the Bible. Right. I'll, I'll read it verbatim because people think I'm making this up, because uh, it's Mark chapter 10. No, you are not 10. making it up, but you are misinterpreting it. Right, I'll just read it. This is from the Muslim, tra no, it's not no, a Muslim translation. No, it's a New Revised it. Standard Version. Get the interpretation from me. Like, it's the Holy Bible, no less. Yes, it is in the Bible. Right. Nobody is Mark chapter that. 10, verse 17. I'll just read it and then oh, you can comment. The they don't, Christians don't like me reading their own Bible. They're no, absolutely I've never they're protesting, you protesting. No, I've never it's there. It's true. They're both, they're both oh, at what it. What you are saying is true, but you are misinterpreting it. Okay. Listen to that man. He has agreed I've not you misquoted don't understand it. it. He has accepted I've not uh, uh, yeah, misquoted it. Fair. He's very good at that. So good. I've not misquoted it, so you're wrong. He agrees with me I've not misquoted it. I said he's giving the right interpretation. What, you that, are misinterpreting the Bible. I, will you let me finish? I've not interpreted it yet. I'm just reading the passage out. Let me try again. 
As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him, that's Jesus, and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't bear forfeit, don't steal. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, notice he drops the good by the way, teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and says, you lack one thing. Can I borrow your finger, sir? This is a serious point. Uh, the middle, probably not the middle one. Thank you. Uh, now, this is exhibit A. And believe me, there's a reason for this. This is one thing, right? So, Jesus looked at him, loved him and says, you lack one thing, right? Bear in mind the one thing. Thank you. Not two things, not three things, one thing. What's the one thing the man lacked, according to Jesus? Poverty. Sell what you own and give your money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. What's wrong with so that? what's the one thing he lacked, according to Jesus? The one, the treasure one thing? Heaven. Thank you very much. Give his, money, give his money to the poor. And as a result, <laughs> he would have treasure in heaven. That's the one thing he lacked to be saved, according to Jesus. Then it continues. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Thank you for your finger. The reason is because in my experience, Christians are always smuggling two things or three things. They'll say, oh no, it says, come follow me, as well as give your money to Paul, which is what you said originally. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And, and you misquoted your own Bible because it doesn't fit your theology, because as a Christian, you no, follow no, Paul no, rather no, than Jesus. No, I, I said initially, was he needed a heart towards God. And it, and it added, only no, added then, later. You, then you said, and follow and me. Later. Yes. And then a heart but you, God you, missed out, you missed out two crucial points. One is, there's one thing he lacks. And secondly, as a result of giving money to the poor, he would have treasure in heaven. It says, and, God, in heaven, and you will have treasure heaven. in heaven as a result of giving your money to the poor. So if you want to be saved according to Jesus, you obey the Jewish law, and in his case, you give no, money to no, the no, poor. No, no. Yeah, and then you will have treasure thing. in heaven. Yeah, you've added a second thing. You've added to obey the Jewish law. Not the one uh, thing. Excuse Not me? The one thing. Are no, you... The one thing was treasure in heaven. The one okay. thing was poverty and treasure in heaven. I haven't added it because in the Matthew's version of the same passage, it has Jesus say, obey the law. Jesus redacts it in his own way. So Matthew understands it to mean the law. But he's quoting the law. No, Do not commit as adultery. As I said to you earlier, Jesus starts with the Ten Commandments, or some of them. Five of them. Because that's where the guy was. He started where the guy was mm. and led him on to what he needed. So, I agree. I agree. What must he do to be saved? According Poverty to Jesus, and treasure in heaven. He needs to have a heart towards God. Yeah. So the two things he must do to be saved are what? According Poverty to Mark 10. And treasure in heaven. Yeah, I agree Poverty with that. And treasure in now heaven. compare this with your earlier uh, response. Which was the heart towards Acor God. According to according to Paul, the Apostle Paul, who is a, the real founder of Christianity we have it today. What must I do to be saved? According to Paul, you've got to give the answer. Believe in the Lord Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus. So you see, we have two different Gospels here. We have the Gospel of Jesus, which I've just mentioned, and we have the Gospel no, of Paul, no, 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 who no, never no, met no, Jesus, no, 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 no. and this he says, what, put your faith what, in Jesus. This is what this one guy had to do. We cannot extrapolate it beyond this one guy. Yes, Jesus met this yes, one guy. He knew his heart perfectly. He knew exactly what this one guy We're needed. Done. We're and done. he told this guy what he needed. We're done. Right, We're what, done. Why do you think it only focuses on one man? Says was something general for all people, something that was general that would work for all people. What this guy had to do was specific for him. Why do you think it's specific well, only, man. well, uniquely for no other one in history? Because Jesus knew his heart perfectly. Yeah. Oh, so he what about other rich? What, what about other rich young do? rulers, uh, rich young people, uh, of which there are many then and today, because and they heard this? Would they be saved by following Jesus' identity. teaching about salvation? They couldn't do it. And it's the the best religion on him. This guy here. No, no, Peter you know, don't, don't, anywhere. that's very good. And the Father of our Lord says what is interesting, the only true God. What is interesting, let me give you another example no from, from John the Baptist. Uh, John the Baptist taught, according to Mark chapter 1, he says this, John the Baptist... No, 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 going back to today, no today what I said in, fits in perfectly, is what the Apostle Paul later said. How? Supreme. He needed a heart towards God. If you do what the Apostle Paul so I, I can't says, listen you if you're heart towards God. So what this guy needed a heart towards God, he needed a love of money searing from his heart, and he needed a heart towards God, which is just what you would get if you do what the Apostle Paul says. See, Jesus said, you lack one thing, give your money to the poor. Hang on, don't, please don't, don't preach at me, because you let me speak. 
the one thing he lacks, he gave his money to the poor, and then he will have treasure in heaven. Note the, the, the asymmetry, or the symmetry rather. Give your money to the poor, your treasure to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. You get rid of one treasure, and you get another treasure. Yeah? Yeah, fine. I, right. I, I'm just summing but, that but, up. No, you say your heart no, towards but, God. But what you're now you're claiming is, is when Paul, in his writings, in Romans, Galatians, whatever, says, put your faith in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved, that is a different gospel. It's not the gospel of Jesus. The result is the same. Do you think it's the, the same gospel? The result is the same. You will have a heart towards God. No, The result is the same. You see, the man, the man is not told to put his faith in Jesus in Mark chapter 10. He's told to give his money to the poor, and then he will have treasure in heaven. You're adding in bits that I'm are not in the gospel. I'm interpreting it by saying the result ah. of that is having a heart towards God. But not, You'll have a heart in right. heaven where God is but that's not, your treasure But that's there. not the same as putting his faith in Jesus. Yeah, if you put your faith in Jesus, that's, you'll end up with a heart towards God, because Jesus is God. No, he denies he's God. He says, why do you call me no, good? There's no one who is good that's but God alone. That's not that he's God. Okay. He's making the guy think, are you sure you want to call me good? Because by calling me good, you're saying that I'm God. No. He's making the guy think. Do, do you know well, that doesn't work because it's called the, the, the constraints of history. Let me explain why. No Jew in first century Palestine uh, would think that a man walking around saying that uh, what Jesus did, that he was Yahweh. You see, Yahweh was the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's the Lord of the universe. He's not some bloke walking in downtown Jerusalem. No Jew would have thought that. It is totally implausible for you to think that some, some sophistry, some clever word game here is getting the man to believe Jesus is actually God. No one would have believed that. These are monotheists. I'm not saying that this man needed to believe Jesus was God. I've never said that. I personally believe Jesus was God, absolutely. A divine being. So, so, but this man didn't need to believe that. All he needed to do was have a heart towards God by putting his treasure in heaven. I agree. That's what Jesus taught. But that is not the gospel of Paul, which you've already mentioned. No, I agree. I argue <laughs> It gives you the same result right. as the gospel of Paul. No, it doesn't. Because it gives you a heart towards God. It's a different God. message. Different it gives message. You a heart towards God. Because Jesus never mentioned the gospel you're speaking of. He never said, put your faith in me and you will be saved. He said, give your money to the poor and you'll have money or treasure in heaven. Now, and also, also, my, my second witness is John the Baptist. Compared to most people in the world, I would say I'm very rich. I would, yeah. Most people in the world are poor, right? Yeah. People in this country are generally rich. And they're, they're, I'm not putting it down. Yes, you are. I'm just talking about how they're low. Are. It's sad that. <laughs> no, no, I think the person I'm actually taking, higher. I'm taking the mickey. Unfortunately, higher, actually. Poor people are higher, everyone would be. Okay. Douglas, I don't Douglas. believe that I need to do what this man, Jesus said okay. to this man. C can I, as my second witness for my position, share with you the gospel, the good news of John the Baptist according to the earliest gospels. I, let me just share with you, according to what Mark tells me anyway. John, this is John chapter 1, sorry, the gospel of Mark chapter 1 verses 4 onwards. John the, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem uh, were going out to him and were baptized by him in the, in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Were their sins forgiven? Um, I believe their sins up to that point in their life would have been forgiven, but I'm not an expert. I can't say I'm well, it's not, on this. It's not rocket science. It actually says they were forgiven. No, I'm not because, sure their future sins would have been forgiven. No, it says proclaiming a baptism of repentance yeah, for right, the forgiveness right. of sins. Okay, okay, I accept that. Right. So let's let's be let's be let's be get here. John the Baptist has a unique role in the whole of life. Fine. Well, he's a prophet of God and uh, he was proclaiming a baptism through this particular rite of initiation, of cleansing, uh, uh, by water. So my point is this, that John the Baptist preached that people's sins could be forgiven by simple repentance and through a symbolic rite of cleansing. He didn't need Jesus to die for anyone's sins before anyone could be forgiven. He said their sins were freely forgiven then. If that is the case, there is no, there's no need for any saviour God to come down and be tortured horribly oh, on the cross that. to die what? because their sins could be freely forgiven by repentance. I accept these people were ignorant of the cross. As the people in the Old Testament were ignorant of the cross. That does not mean the cross did not have to happen. I absolutely refute the view that you're putting forward that without the cross, people can't go to heaven. The people in the Old Testament didn't know about the cross, but they'll make it to heaven because of the cross. These people, if they were, if they're going to make it to heaven, will make it to heaven because of the cross, even though they were ignorant of it at this point that they were forgiven. But Paul says in his letters that unless you believe that Jesus died and rose again and died for your sins, you are you you, you have no life in you. But these people you have admitted knew nothing about this and their sins were forgiven and they went to heaven. You can't, you can't have it teaching, both ways, Douglas. No, I'm not having it both ways because Paul's teaching is only for those people after his teaching was given. 
These people are certainly before. Why, why, why is John the Baptist's teaching so different from Paul's gospel? Because the Christ hadn't happened at that time. Yeah. And it's not that different. I, I have to put to you, what you need is a heart towards God. People in the Old Testament had a heart towards God, and they were ignorant of the cross. Today, the easiest way to give someone a heart towards God is to teach them about oh, the cross. Don't need to shout to teach them I, I, I'm, how much I'm God hard, loves them. I'm not hard of hearing. Jesus on the cross. I'm not hard of hearing, by the way. You may not be, but I'm sorry. It's because <laughs> corner, it brings out. It brings, it out it brings out the loveliness in you, yes. Uh, <laughs> My question is this, do you agree that Jesus' death on the cross was a particularly horrible way to die? Absolutely. And that he agonised, and to such an extent he said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Absolutely, right. yes. Well, he didn't speak English, but yes. Oh, he didn't? Oh, thank you for that. I, I assumed he did. Sorry, I'm terribly ignorant about these things. Why would God torture to death his only son so that our sins would be forgiven when John the Baptist just says, he goes around proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people were forgiven their sins, wouldn't that be a much less cruel and horrible way for God to ensure our salvation because simply by forgiving us? Because could only be forgiven because Jesus was delayed to die on the cross. Old people in the Old Testament can only be forgiven because Jesus died on the cross in the future for them. Okay. Did Jesus pay, pay, pay our sin debt on the cross? Yes. Let me ask you again, because you're going to... Are you sure he with paid our... one exception. Yeah. Uh, this is what I believe, and maybe it's not correct to Christian theology. What I believe is all sins but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will be forgiven. Fair enough. And the people that don't become Christians commit blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Okay, I That's accept... That's what I believe. Well, right? I, I accept that. The reason I ask is, see, see, do you see a difference between repaying a debt and forgiving someone? Do you see a difference? Uh, sorry, if you're trying to be subtle about this, then no, maybe... Look, the, the you have a PhD thing. in mathematics. If you have a PhD in mathematics, you can cope with what I'm saying. It's not rocket science. Is there a difference between paying a debt? Okay, you owe me a tenner. Well, you don't really, but let's pretend you do, yeah? Right. right. You owe me a tenner, and you can't afford to pay me back. And I say, don't worry about it. Because you're such a lovely guy. I'm yeah, such a lovely... <laughs> okay. Very funny. Um, now, that... that if I was to, if I was to pay, if you were to pay me back, by the way, that would be repaying the debt. Yes. So on one hand, I forgive the debt because I'm such a lovely guy, allegedly. And on the other hand, you actually do pay the debt back. You give me a 10 quid back. Do you see a difference between the first example where I say, no worries, I forgive you. Uh, I don't hold it against you anymore. Wipe the slate clean. Uh, don't pay me the money. Let's just forget about it, dude. Oh, yeah, there's yeah? a difference, but I'm not sure how And, and the second difference, well, because, be because on the second example is your example of Jesus, uh, a debt has been paid through Jesus' death on the cross. So something had to happen, a debt had to be paid. According to John the Baptist and Jesus in his the early Gospels, there's no debt to be paid. God forgives people. He says, this is a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness right, right, right. of sins. Okay. Do you this, see the this, difference? This is what happens, but it can Do only happen, it can only happen because Jesus later died on the cross. No, the but means by which it happened was Jesus shedding his blood on the cross. It's either repayment of debt or it's forgiveness. It can't be both. You can't have your cake and eat it, Douglas. Even with a PhD. I think a better example would be, I go to court. What am I understanding? Uh, what am I understanding I here fine, is John the Baptist to pay that fine for me. <laughs> That'd be a better example because right, these people have sinned. There's a price to pay for that sin, ah. and that price is eternity in hell. Right. And instead of them paying in eternity in hell. Jesus somehow, when he was dying on the cross, spent eternity in hell for each of them. Yeah. But you see the problem, that's not what John the Baptist taught. It's no, not I'm what not Jesus but taught, it's what's but it's what Paul taught. I agree, it's there in the New Testament, no, sorry, it's sorry. in Romans, they but it's not in that. Paul. They were ignorant of it, I agree. John the but Baptist was, was ignorant. Needed. No, no, no. Yes, yes, he was ignorant of the cross. Absolutely, he was ignorant of the cross. <laughs> was God ignorant of the cross? No. Okay, did God send John the Baptist? <laughs> yes. I say, well, hang on, let's tie these two statements up, shall we? God sent John the Baptist to preach this message, but God wasn't ignorant of the cross. Yes. So how do you square up the circle there? What's the problem? So he didn't tell John the Baptist Douglas, the you've got a PhD in maths, come on. <laughs> What's the problem? So because <laughs> on the one hand, God is validating this message where forgiveness of sins is available through a simple repentance of Jordan. 
But on the other hand, you believe that the Gospel of Paul, which says only through Jesus paying the debt on the cross, can sins be uh, dealt with. I, I, I but but you are attributing I'm to God two different systems which no, are contradictory to each other. The only difference is, here they were ignorant of the cross. Was God ignorant? No. But did John the Baptist's message come from God? Yes. But John these the Baptist people, was ignorant of the cross. As people in the Old Testament were forgiven. <laughs> no, 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 John the Baptist. These people John were the forgiven Baptist, without John the Baptist had a poor birth and Christ coming, though. Uh, beg can, can I add John one the thing here? Beg your pardon. John the Baptist's ministry, this was, Jesus' ministry wasn't, hasn't started yet here. Was John the Baptist not a poor birth before Christ? This is the John the Baptist's ministry. Jesus' ministry hasn't started here. That's why John the Baptist. To take over the position of the cross? Okay. So I'm John the Baptist, sorry, so John the Baptist wouldn't be able to know about the cross per se until... My question to you is, were their sins forgiven according to the Gospel of Mark? According to John the Baptist? Believe, believe what? It doesn't say that. No, I know, because Christ had them. Right. So, so how could they believe in Christ if if they hadn't heard of Christ? Well, then there, at that stage then, no, they're waiting on Christ. They're up yeah. Had they heard of Christ? According to what you say? No. So, but yet their sins were forgiven? So how can they have their sins forgiven by believing in Christ? There's a contradiction there. They believe in God. Okay, but not Jesus. No, but you just said Jesus, they didn't know about Jesus. This gentleman, Douglas, said they didn't know about the cross. They didn't know about Jesus or the cross, and yet their sins were forgiven and they were saved. Like all Old Testament prophets. They needed a change of heart. Why do you need the cross then? Because that, that's the mechanics. God forgives sins through the cross. But you said they paid a debt through the cross. Which is it? Sorry, sorry, you can't pay sin. You said that Jesus paid a sin debt by dying on the cross. Yes. Jesus, but they, so they were is forgiven. It, are they paying sin a debt? Was taken from them and laid upon Jesus on the cross. They were ignorant of Jesus on the cross, but that was still a part of what was going on. How do you know it was a part of going on? John the Baptist doesn't bear witness to that. Right, he was ignorant of it too. I agree, John, they didn't know. On this, in this chapter, the people didn't know. Right, how how do we know? Because of what Paul says, yes? In this yeah, time, Jesus hang ministry on, hang hasn't on, hang started Did Paul yet. ever meet the flesh and blood Jesus on the road, uh, uh, at all in his lifetime? Did Jesus? Uh, did Paul ever meet Jesus in his lifetime? Yeah, he had a vision. He had a vision no, 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 that, that was years Matthews. after Jesus ended to heaven. During his lifetime, did he ever meet Jesus and the disciples? We don't know, probably not. We what, know is sure. there any evidence that he did? No. Please? No. So we assume that he would have mentioned it surely in his letters. You remember I had dinner with Jesus and he told me all about it. He never right. says that. He surely would have said he met Jesus if he had met Jesus. That's the one thing you would have said yeah, in all his letters. It's reasonable to expect that. It's reasonable to expect that. Yeah, so, so you trust a guy who never actually met the historical Jesus over the testimony of John the Baptist and Jesus he himself. He met people that had met Jesus and he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Yeah, he had a vision of Jesus. That's his word. He says in Acts 29, uh, I had a, uh, a vision of the heavenly Jesus. The people who were with him in one account, or 28 then, we can look at the passage if you wish. No, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Um, somewhere, somewhere in Acts. Yeah. He said he had a vision, and in one of the accounts of this vision that he had, he said he had, the people with him saw nothing. A cloud. It's right. Nothing. They heard, I think they heard. They heard a voice, but they saw nothing. So this is, Paul says that the Jesus last appeared to me as one untimely born. He says that in Corinthians, I think, somewhere. So all these appearances, if, if Paul's uh, vision of the risen Jesus was the last in a series of appearances to the disciples, we can then infer that all of the appearances were visions. Because they're all of the same nature. Do you see what I mean? So we know this is the earliest... Well, okay. I believe that there, there were people having visions of Jesus even in this last century, possibly in this century. So um, it was no, last. No, but Paul claimed to be an apostle. And, and Jesus says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I think, that Jesus first appeared, in fact, I'll tell you exactly what, we'll read it, because I think this is key to exactly what happened to Paul. Let's we'll go through it. It says here, right, that he appeared to, uh, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and he appeared to Kephas, which is Peter, as we know, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, Let most of whom appearances. are still alive, though some have died. Are you with me so far? Then, it says, he appeared to James the Just, then to all the apostles. Are you with me? Yeah. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, 
unfit to be called an apostle of God. Well, I agree with him on that. With He's unfit to be called an apostle of God. With so, the possible exception of all of those were physical experiences. It doesn't say that. But they were. If you actually know, read the Gospels, they were physical no. experiences. You see, you forget that 1 they Corinthians... Were, with the exception let me explain. of Paul, they were all before 1 the Corinthians. No, no, no. 1 Corinthians was written many years before any of the Gospels were written. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you can't say, oh, Paul, it says in the Gospels, because the Gospels weren't written at that time. Yeah? So the earliest account we have in history of the resurrection of Jesus is in Paul's writings. And here's an eyewitness account. He says, last okay, of all, he appeared to me. We learn from the Gospels, with the exception of Paul, all of those appearances happened before the ascension. But that's not what Paul therefore, says. Therefore, they're physical appearances. That's not what Paul therefore, says. I think it makes reasonable to assume that Paul's appearance That's not what Paul physical. says. You're reading the later Gospels into what Paul says. Paul says I'm that not Jesus. I'm theology in the later Gospels. I'm reading events from the later yeah. Gospels. You're reading later uh, uh, works into Paul's writing. Events from the later works, not theology. It from is the theology. Later works. They're theological works, the Gospels. They're, they're all about events. God. I'm reading events from them. According to Paul, he says that the appearances that were made to James and to uh, Cephas and, and everyone else, and he then, the resurrected Jesus, then he appeared to me. The same Jesus who appeared to them, they appeared to me. But we know. But, 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 but we know from Paul's own testimony in Acts that it was a vision that Paul had. Thank you. That Paul had a vision. So I would then deduce, working backwards, that when he had the the 500, it was a vision too. Thank you. So. Oh, sorry, 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 yes. So, so therefore, Paul... Um, no, oh, I agree I with you, Paul. I think you're reading too much into that, Paul. I would I agree. Think, I've not thought about this issue before, okay. but I think you're reading too much into it. I thought, it's an last, interesting idea. It's an interesting idea. That last point, Paul says, I, I was unfit to be called an apostle. I agree with Paul. Yeah, he was he's unfit been, to be yeah, called an right, apostle. He's been humble. So he's been he was humble. unfit to call an apostle. I agree with the Bible. He's Hallelujah. He's been humble. He's been truthful. He's been humble. He was unfit to be an apostle. يا ديمة خير وعطاء ويا ما بلقاء وسخاء يا نجما شعف أبهجنا يا جعلة نور والله يا ديمة خير وعطاء ويا ما بلقاء